<laughs> well, sorry we're late, ladles and jelly spoons, but uh, there's been a lot going on. We've had inter internet outages and we've had... Um, the video is still not rendered, so I still so I can't show it today, but I will publish it after this thing. This is Tim together with Christina, Ian and Yuliani there in the bottom corner. And this is Balcony Banter. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hello. <laughs> We're live. We're live. We are live. Yeah. I can't. I can't even tell what. Don't have you don't have your clicker. Oh dear. <clears throat> Oh, it wait, I'm seeing a nightmare here. Friend. Let me just go and get Christina's clickers. Yes, yeah. please. Because uh, that was an, an amazing side. idea, Christine. You had there. Yeah. Yep. I think that's the best use to make of the clicker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Spanish castanetas. That's better. I've got rid of the advert. <laughs> 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 so it's freezing out here look at the weather behind me no oh, sun whatsoever dear. it was actually warm last night but uh i don't even know where i am now and oh. we had thunderstorms uh, thunderstorms yes. we had we did but tim did wake me you can wake me up anytime the thunderstorms okay i shall do that because i like the thunder and lightning very yeah, very frightening it. me yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got all. Yeah. Magnifico. I, was just, yeah, I was just saying there earlier on, we've had gale force winds again, uh, and it's causing havoc on the roads, the railways. Uh, some of the woodlands round about are completely flattened. The destruction is absolutely no real. It'll take for ages to get it cleared up, you know. You know, it's yeah. really weird because a friend of mine lives in Alice Springs and uh, they haven't had food for two weeks because the weather was so bad. In Alice Springs, that's like the middle of Australia, it's the driest place on earth, if you like. Yeah. And uh, they've had the weather so bad there that the, the rail and the trucking is out, so nobody can deliver food. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, what what they had to do in, in two of the villages not far from where I stay, um, they actually had the, the the mobile food wagons out, and people were coming down to get meals at the at, at the food wagons because obviously the, no electricity, they couldn't get in with motor vehicles or mm -hmm. anything because the roads are just you know completely completely blocked up with trees. Oh dear! You that's know? what you get. That's what you get for planting trees. Concrete everything over, sort the problem out. Ah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You need the you need the green. The green keeps us alive. The green keeps us keep alive. They give us oxygen. <laughs> we need the trees. Actually, I think the trees are just farming us. Because <laughs> what they do is they give us oxygen to live, and then when we die, we feed them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What yeah. goes around comes around. So I'm yeah. just fertilizer in a tree farm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be a human farm, wouldn't it? The trees having a human yeah. a human farm. Uh, that's I'm it. sure they can. That's I'm it. sure they can feed on something a lot better than us, though. Uh, so we don't have a film tonight. That means we're live, live. And uh, I have asked people to come in, and Ian's asked people to come in, and anybody wants to come in and say hello, they're very, very welcome. All they've got to do is go to timothydowd.com and then there's a button there saying join in. And it's very easy. You click the button, answer a couple of questions with yes. Just saying, can we use your microphone and can we use your camera? And if you're on a computer, you could use Google Chrome, which is good. That's the best one to use on a computer. And if you're on a phone, just use the standard browser on your phone. If it's an, like an Apple phone, it will be Safari. And if it's an Android phone, it'll be whatever you've got on Android. But Google Chrome is the best. And then it'll just ask you a few questions. Just make sure there's no bright lights behind you, like I always have. And uh, and come in and say hello. You don't have to stay on all day. Just come in and say hello. I'm um, Billy Widget from Norfolk. And then uh, tell us uh, your view on the topic today, which is, funnily enough, 
Working from home. Mm-hmm. Working, yep. Working from home. Did you get yeah. any replies, Ian, from, from that that you put out last week? Yes, this is the reason, this is the main reason that uh, I've brought this forward. Um, we spoke about it and we thought we would just get this in now <clears throat> because with the, the COVID restrictions and everything changing, mm-hmm. a lot of people now are uh, being asked to go back to work, go back into their offices. Mm-hmm. Really, I'm, I'm trying to find out and trying to gauge people's feelings uh, when they were first uh, sort of got the, got got the opportunity to work from their homes, just to sort of talk about it and how they feel and how they felt, were they uh, anxious about it, or did mm-hmm. they have the proper places to work from? So this is the idea of bringing this forward tonight, just to have a wee chit chat. I have one or two practical things, and I'm sure Juliana will have one or two well-being well-being things as well that we could add into it. And the last three years of my work, I worked at home, so because Christina needed more care, so instead of leave, leaving my job, they allowed me to work uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday home, didn't they? And I just go in on a Monday and a, no, I didn't even go in on a Friday, did I? Just a Monday, and I was it was just Wednesday, wasn't it? It was one day anyway. I'd, I'd have to drive all the way to Munich, and uh, they could smell me. But mostly at home. I got a tip for those of you working at home who do Zoom calls. What you got to do is to blow on your cup of wine to make it look like tea. Good <laughs> <laughs> huh? good good I stole goody, that from goody. Facebook today. I know too. Get your wine horns. Yeah, don't get your wine horns up here, you know. <laughs> we, uh, Christina and I did a balcony banter today, like the old-style balcony banter, just me and her chit-chatting on the balcony. And I was going to show it today, but it didn't finish on time. And uh, what I'm thinking of doing, though, is downloading it as we talk. Now, the danger there is I can't, I can't touch anything after it starts downloading. And also is using up the bandwidth of the thing. So I'm not sure whether I want to do that. But uh, if, you, if you want to see that, we might even publish it straight afterwards. Yeah, no, we do. No, we do. Yeah. yeah, we just publish it as a, as a, a video afterwards. Yeah, I do what, uh, publish it like what you did last week with uh, uh, Christine's chart. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, that was, that I loved was, it. Yeah, that was very good. That was oh, really we good. talked about a lot of stuff today, didn't we, kid? Yeah. We talked about. Um, I cut that bit out, didn't we, with the yeah. with, with Adolf? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> she was. But you started it. I started it. No, it was because you said that the voting women got the vote in Germany earlier than in Britain, and all uh-huh. I said was, "Who did they vote for?" <laughs> nasty pasty. Oh. I'm a nasty yeah, pasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there was other things we were talking about. A couple of dreams you'd had that were funny. Yeah. I'm not going to spoil it in case you're going to watch it later. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, stuff we've had for tea. Oh, somebody came up to me the other day and said, uh, as, whilst we're not talking about um, work or anything like that. Somebody um, contacted me the other day and says, why is your plate bigger than Chris's plate? Do you know? What's is it? Other? No, it isn't. It's, it? it's just the, it's the fisheye camera that I use. It just The plate that's closer to the camera looks unnaturally big. Exactly. So it looks like I'm, I'm eating a mountain of food. when I, I, I am actual... witness that the plates are all the same size. And not only that, they're tea plates. They're not dinner plates. Yeah. They're side plates. They, so, they only look so full. Yeah. Yeah, they're not full at all. Yeah. I've made four pizzas exactly. today. I've frozen three. And I'm going to do one tonight. We're having, uh, oh, this is my favourite, anchovy and pineapple pizza. <laughs> didn't shave. Uh, I didn't shave. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. no. yeah. Didn't have time for right. anything today. Too busy, too busy <coughs> relaxing at home. Look at the weather. There's, uh, there's uh, what's his name? Angry, I know him as Angry Velo. I currently work from home and I have done since January last year. Mm-hmm. However, I am changing to hybrid working. 
three days at home and two days at work. Uh huh. From the fourteenth, from the fourteenth of February. You're going in for Valentine's Day. You're going yep. in for Valentine's Day. I think uh, I think this is what will be happening now with a lot of people going back to work. Um, they will probably be getting uh, maybe a couple of days at home or, or you know, a couple of yeah. days at their work or something like that. But uh, what I was really, really keen is, I mean, it's, you think about it now, it's about two years uh, since everybody stopped working in offices. And when you say offices, you're talking about call centres, uh, big offices that handles government stuff, uh, local authorities, um, a lot of, a lot of people uh, sometimes maybe did face to face in their offices. Uh -huh. I know uh, I know one lady um, he, she got the chance to work from home and she jumped at it because it suited her uh, a young child going to going to nursery but she had to get the equipment and everything put in on her a own. Lot of well, they, they they actually put it in for her. They they gave it. They gave her everything. But a lot of people are working in different sort of different themes in their house. Some of them are working in their bedroom. Some are working on the kitchen table. Um, again, you have another problem with people. If you have a family and everybody's working, where are they going to? Where, where are they going to work? It gets a wee bit uh, strenuous. I would have thought. And I would have thought at the end of the day or at the end of the week, uh, their heads would be spinning a wee That's bit. That's true. So, Unless yeah. one of them's a hitman, and then one if they work at home, then it'll sort of like sort, sort it out, sort of out in a couple of days. Yeah, no, uh, uh, I think, I don't know what your initial uh, reaction would be if somebody uh, said, right, you're going to work from home. I would say I would be anxious to start with if I've never, ever done it in my life. If you've been sitting in, say, a call centre, well, use a call centre, for example, because they sit uh, in clusters, sometimes clusters of six, sometimes clusters of eight, and that's your wee team. Mm -hmm. So if you suddenly uh, say, right, you can work from home, you're going to be on your own. You're away from your team. So what effect does that have on you to start with? You know, it's just... It Working from home was a normal part of our lives when, when I was working with the computer company with Siemens. And we actually found out that if you worked from home, you had to visit physically somewhere quite regularly just to keep that team spirit up. Because we were not working from home, but we were working remotely. Our teams were spread out all over the world. And we actually worked 24 hours uh, a day. So that means that the eight hours in Singapore, China, and uh, Malaysia were, came first, and then Europe took over, and then America took over, and then West Coast. So we were actually handing off um, work to other people as we went. So remote teams, we found, were, were very good, and we could work you know, 24 hours a day, basically. As long like as Wall Street. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. And um, but it was mostly project work. So people were, um, you know, uh, first of all, they went they wanted to ask the people, what, what do you need? And then they'd write specifications and the specification would be put out to tender. And somebody had to uh, offer, well, we'll write it or, or we'll send it to this place in in wherever in India to, to get it written. Then we'd have the test cases and all that. So, I mean, basically, it was just moving paper and information about. But we had to trust each other. So what my job was, was to get those people together physically, at least at the beginning of the project, one time during the project, typically at a crisis point, and at the end for a look back, lessons learned and a celebration. So basically I was partying all the time. But uh, I really found that working remotely, uh, which is very similar to working from home, uh, can only be done if you trust the people you work with. So you can't come into a team... Uh, working from home immediately and build up the same trust as it, uh, that you can if you know the people physically. Even if you're in, in different continents, you have to sort of meet at the beginning to get the measure of these people, have, a, have a, an experience together that you can rely on when you need it later in, you, in your team dynamic. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. working yeah. from home 
is is different than working in an office or in a team yeah. and up to each individual as well i mean how how they um yeah sort of uh, direct themselves because yeah. there, there is uh, i mean yes you have the tasks that you have to do um whether you are working for yourself uh, as self-employed or whether you work for corporate um well but uh, still you need to sort of like set your own deadlines and uh, you have to have your own self-discipline about the work you're doing and find finding a balance because like you said like you mentioned ian um it is um it can be in the first place seen as an opportunity yes i mean who wouldn't want to be working from home ideally you could stay working in your pajamas <laughs> if uh, if you wanted um the only thing uh, is that um it, it can get challenging when uh, when there are other people uh, around which are normally not in that environment so no, uh, in the uh, in the yeah. like the normal work life uh, outside home you would go um, uh, and use that space uh, and then come back to um, come back to uh, to home which is another safe place yeah but now the safe place, the safe haven, so uh, sort of like, is uh, becoming as well your your work uh, area. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there needs to be uh, a balance as well. Yeah. And yeah. and yes, a room can uh, can make a, a difference to have a, a room that is a little bit clear or nicely made up maybe or yeah how you, I, how you feel comfortable yeah. a room a, as you, you you said the word there actually right at the very end comfortable you need some place comfortable to work uh you need some place um your work right your right working height as well plenty of light um proper things to sit on don't go and get a stool because uh there is a lot of people uh, it works in uh, like call centers and dedicated places like that have actually dedicated furniture because mm. the way the way they say they may have ailments they may have back pain or something like that um, whereas working at home uh, as you say get yourself comfortable get yourself in a room where you have light coming in or where you can open a window um, if you're in a if you're a sort of looking at a, a stress situation uh mm. look out the window you can see what's going on outside um things 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 like that i mean another th thing is get yourself a structure mm -hmm. uh, yes Good something one. that you work to um my favorite is a to-do list yeah you're very good at that <laughs> so <laughs> you get right you get up in the morning or your last thing at night you get up in the morning and put out what you have to do including your coffee break and your lunch break and put absolutely time, put time scales against them i mean yeah. that works if you if you have a uh, a job that is predictable i mean but if you are in a let's say customer service role where you you wait for people to call you or if you're in a, a role where you have to react to things, um, mm -hmm. you can't really do that. And I, I think that the way that we're looking at home working now at the moment is people that typically work in an office or work in a team that are not sort of facing the customer um, mm -hmm. or whoever's using your service or product. Um, yeah. they, they tend to go back into their... Um, they can do i think it's meetings mostly you know it's uh, if you if you're working from home because you just put your head down and crunch numbers let's say you're accounting or you're doing some back office stuff then it doesn't matter where you sit the only difference would be that if you are used to sort of an office environment you might get bored at home or as you say there yeah. might be distractions at home that detract you from your work then again, yep. you might be the type of person that's distracted in the office and you're great at home. So it's everybody yeah. to their own. But yeah. uh, if you have a job that you really can't do from home, like, you know, you, you 
just just think of the of the hospitality industry. You, you know, you can't like mm. so. It, I'll make you a McDonald's. Come to my house. You know, so yeah, um, that, yeah. That's, so that's, that's hard. That, yeah, that's that's maybe that's maybe fair enough in instances like this. But I mean, let's face it. There is a very large number of people in this country and in the world work in call centres, and it's a it's an ongoing process in the call centre. You you take a call, you do what you have to do, and then you take on the next call. It's it's it keeps going all the time, and these people actually work, as I said before, in teams, and if one person in that team has a problem they can actually contact somebody very, very quickly there and there and get an answer to that problem and they can put back to the, the person on the other end. I mean, I've, I've seen it. I've worked in, I've worked in call centres for about uh, five, six years of my life. That was all I did. And we saw exactly how they were set up and exactly how they did. These are the people, uh, when this, when this uh, pandemic started, these people were shut down just like that and they were sent home and that was the end of the story. Now, all these places have been sitting empty. Now, some of them have been working at home. How did they feel about this? I bet it was very, very strange. How did they get used to this? Get used to change? Can they cope with this? Because they don't have a team around about them. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody near hand that they can get to? And as mm -hmm. I said before, comfortable yeah. and have a structure to their, to, their, to their work. Just want to say hello to a few people. Um, Angry Bello, so he's on there, Graham. And uh, Cole's arrived. Uh, if you haven't watched Cole's Walk Around Bournemouth, that's good. I finished watching it today, Cole. It was great. I like, liked everything. Very well done. Um, Craig, got a new job selling vacuum cleaners, but it sucked. Craig, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Saying, I'm, I'm a Westminster civil servant, but I promised I've not been to any parties. Boris never invited me. Okay. Uh, Sliver Life is saying, Ted, the small sheep are further away. A response to Dougal about sheep in the photo. Huh? Oh. oh, I don't I know like what that is. The plates. Huh? A comparison to the plates. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. That's it. Oh, the plate. Oh, that, is, very, that is very old. That is very old. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've been forward-facing role all through the pandemic, says Alan, and still I am due myself. Uh, blah, I am due to myself and my staff being essential. It's not just NHS, etc. We are still just take precautions. Yeah, front-facing. You can't work from home, unfortunately. Yep. Uh, Sarah saying I like working from home, but I have to go into the office. I have a two-hour commute now. I do miss the banter in the office. Yep. Maria's online, Pato the Duck's there, coming in from an office scenario, it worked from home for 15 months, now to Agile working, about half and half. Agile is great, gives me more time for my YouTube channels. So Pato <laughs> the Duck, go and check out the YouTube channel. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen the downside of home working for women in abusive marriages. There's no outlet for those women to meet work colleagues. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, saying, that's an interesting one too. I've been working from home in my day job, which is insurance, since a year before COVID. I get much more done. It's easier to plan my day. Also helps during school holidays as I'm a single dad. Mm. Right. Yep. Uh, remember we had teams meeting and a certain person forgot to put his top on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's better than a certain person forgot to put her top on, I suppose. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Uh, abusive, abusive partners can also be female, says Angry Velo. Mm -hmm. uh, KS Caretaker, oh, Billy Kimber says, hi, guys. And KS Caretaker, I'm off to work now, short commute to the room next door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, um, also working from home helps me watch Tim's morning walks. Ah, my morning walks. I told you I would wait until the Kalima's over before doing that, so we're just praying the Kalima lasts for another month. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Marie Elton's on. Hi, Tim and Christina, Juliani, Ian, everyone. I've tried working from home since COVID started, and there are positives, e.g. no commute, and negatives, missing the work cup. Very, very true. If anybody yeah. wants to join us on here, we've got uh, a couple more slots that you can come in. So don't forget to go to timothydowd.com slash live mm -hmm. and follow the instructions and come in and chat to us. Yep. That, uh, just what you finished up there, said... Now, going through the, 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 the comms that I got, um, the positive thing was the no travel involved. That came up every time. Oh, I don't have to travel. I don't have to travel. It's great. Um, some people actually came up with they had more time to complete their task when they were sitting at home. If they were given a task, mm -hmm. uh, they were doing, they had actually more time actually and better time to, to, to complete it at home. Um, I mean, the bosses were this, more lenient, or, or what? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's no case of somebody looking over your shoulder. Uh, you know, finish that yet? They could actually start a task and finish it uh, without any distractions. Yeah. One or one or two of the negative and, and dislikes was their working space at home. That was that came up quite a lot actually, mm -hmm. uh, right. where people was working, and that's a thing I would think would be a mentally uh, effective thing uh, after a length of time if you were only working in a decent space you know and uh, i'm not going to get political here but in it's a it's a political reason why people uh can't okay now i'm not I'm, what i'm going to say is we don't we go out to work to get money to buy stuff that's the model we have right Nobody goes out, or not many people, go out to work because they love it. I know a lot of people love their jobs, but given the option, they wouldn't do it. Or they'd do it slightly different. So I think that work has to change. And it's not only COVID that it's taking over, but also automation. I was an automation engineer, and... The, the the amount of automation that has gone in the last 20 years yeah. was amazing mm -hmm. and it, it accelerated each year and what's coming in the future is you can't even imagine it i mean there are going to be jobs that are going to be automated that you wouldn't even dream of them being automated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean not only bus drivers lorry drivers taxi drivers any anything to do with transport it'll eventually go away and but also the thinking jobs like you know high powered um uh, what are they called financial advisors they've proved now that financial advisors once they've set up all the ais that they'll give uh, they'll give them uh, better options than a person that a person will not always give you the best option you know overall mm -hmm. so it looks like that type of thing is going away selling insurance you know, even now you go online, click, 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 click you got insurance, yeah? yeah. yeah. You don't yeah. need the guy to come to your house yeah. anymore. And yeah. even uh, like McDonald's or, or shops, you know, the self-service and the yeah. online building. So what's going to happen is we are going to have a lot of leisure time and no money to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a political will to change the change the way we are working. Working from home is a good idea because if people still need to work or want to work or, or have to work, um, then it's better to do it wherever you are. It doesn't have to be work from home, but work remotely with other people uh, in a remote group and then just meet up once in a while for that sort of tangible thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. The days of going to the office and sticking your nose to the grindstone and coming home at five, that's it's obviously gone. gone anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now the work is, is more dynamic. And with mm -hmm. the with the advent of the new technologies like video conferencing, um, smell vision will come out soon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, great for cook great for cooking shows, you know, great for cooking yeah. shows. But I think that the the, the way it is going to it is going to change and it's it's a political will so what you have to do is to prepare your children if you like or your teenagers prepare them to 
create the world that they want and don't just let the old fogies who are mentally back in the dark ages as, as far as technology is to decide and definitely not people who are profit driven that is yeah. going to be the biggest downfall of the society yeah. will will be the profit driven ways because you have to be social because less people are going to have to are going to be able to work and if you just let them go under the under the you know throw them under a bus then that's not going to work that yeah. is not going to work yeah yeah no, it, it is it is true what you said i mean uh, i can i've been retired for x number of years and long before i retired uh, i was actually in the process of setting up what they called at that time with the local authority hot desks where the people the guys it was out about they'd maybe go out do do what they have to do around the building sites and what have you go home do their work at home but uh, part of their part of their brief was they had to meet with their mates in the office at a hot desk one day per week, mm -hmm. so they could update themselves and change themselves, update their update their laptops and what have you and all the rest. Of it. Yeah, I do agree. Um, I think this past couple of years it's come more to the, the fore than what it has ever been before. It is moving faster now, uh, and I think. Once people go back into the office environment, it'll go even faster. That's true. I mean, Pato the Ducks just said it'd be like Star Trek, but there are two options here. You can either have the Star Trek utopian society where, you know, you go and you study other life forms for five years. And you're right. You can create the food and feed the people. You can house the people. It, it sounds very communist. And I know communist is a, is a nasty word, but and we need a new name for looking after the human race or resting on our laurels because nine to five work keeping a 40 hour week was designed for one person in the family to feed a family right now now three family members have got to have 40 hours a week plus an extra job just to make ends meet yeah. so the way that work is is created and distributed i mean i had a very high powered job and when i left the company didn't die Nothing happened, basically. So they were paying me for 20 years to do something. And when I left, not a blip, you know, no, not a blip. Machine, like, machine took over. Well, no, they, 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 they just, I, I don't know. I mean, there, there was three people doing what I was doing, but they weren't doing it full time. Yeah, they, so one would take that bit I was yeah. doing, one would take that bit, one would take yeah. that bit. Yeah. But yeah. I was totally dispensable. Yeah. Well, yeah. there was there. I was totally indispensable, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think that the way the way things are working now is people create. Uh, you have to work towards a future that you want to create. So what is the future? Let's let's say my my future would be that the the work week is three days and the leisure time is four days. Then in the three days you work. You work in leisure industries that look after the four days. Now, there are certain things you need to do. Uh, to, you need to create food, you need to create uh, housing, and you need to create, um, yeah. No. I was going to say stuff for people to buy, but you don't really need that if, if, if that's no longer a, a way to look good. You know, yep. living your life is going to be the, yep. the new prestige. Yeah. I feel that we have, um, as you said, uh, with, with <coughs> a lot of more automation, we got uh, a big opportunity there to, uh, to, to actually use that energy that we gain out of that uh, and put it more into uh, sustainable relationship building. And that, and that already starts uh, at home. I mean, um, and then it ripples out uh, to to your uh, community or your workspace, uh, wherever you want to put it. Uh, with that uh, time that we actually gain, uh, we we can uh, build much more meaningful relationships, and uh, and that is that's a, a luxury that we uh, can allow ourselves in the future. And if we can uh, actually get our mind to uh, to to have that as a goal, 
uh, as well uh, that uh, would help humanity uh, in a lot of ways. Yeah. To I mean, listen, what, what Christine was saying many, many times uh, lately. Click, 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 click. girl. <laughs> Click girl. No, Christine was saying, uh, listening, listening uh, to to people, um, and when we when we can gain that uh, that time and save that time, uh, we have actually more um, uh, energy available to to um, to listen and to make that effort. Mm -hmm. As uh, as you were saying, uh, Tim, as well. That uh, in back in the days it was just one uh, one person earning for the family. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, a lot of things uh, over the many years have changed, and it's uh, it's uh, not only one provider in the family; it's mm, the the uh, woman and the man. And, but the thing uh, is, it's not and a now, provider. And nowadays, even the kids are coming into play. Yeah, but they're not they providing. Much earlier now, too. They're, they're just they're just consuming more, and I think that's the biggest problem. When I when I finished work, right, I've never worked so hard in my life as I do now. You know, I mean, I do I do let's say three jobs. I look after the house, which is like a, a house a houseman, a house frau, a housewife, housekeeper, <laughs> housekeeper. I look after Chris, so I'm a carer, and I also do the stuff that I like, you know. And some of it is yeah. is is work. I mean, you I expend energy, and I get something <laughs> back for it. Yeah. So that like the YouTube channel and stuff. So I'm thinking now is that everything is work. Everything is classed as work, and so therefore you need to be recompensed for your time and the way that it's been treated or the way that it's been uh, created is that those people who work hard against most right and that is a lie it's the people who know the people who work hard that gets most so it, it, the way that it's happened now is not everybody is working towards the benefit of the society a lot of people are working for the benefit of a small group to, at the cost of society, and that is what's ha that, that is where we're at these days. We're at these days that there's. I just watched a thing on the TV today. This guy has got a block of flats in Germany. He's got 200 units, and it's typically older people. They're between 60 and 90 years old. They don't want to move, and he's just decided to chuck them all out and get students in because he can earn a lot more from students because they've got a rent at 320 euros a month that he can't put up because of the, you know, the communist rules that you can't put mm -hmm, the price mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm, but he's found mm -hmm. a way of chucking them out now and, um, and getting students in. So as, as long as you have people working like that and people who create stuff that nobody in the right mind needs and, and stuff that doesn't last, like consumer stuff, then basically you have to you have to ask yourself what am I doing, what am I doing, mm -hmm. am I benefiting mm -hmm. society or not? And this is a political thing that's going to have to change, otherwise there'll be revolutions. Yep. So did, did I you... bring us down to the uh, to the all vote for Jeremy Corbyn again? No. <laughs> 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 do Do you think Do you think people? Uh, uh, in the future, will be more stressed out, or will they be more relaxed in their work? You know, I think that if you look at the children today, I'm talking young adults up to about 25. Yeah, they they are going to take over the world, right? And you have these elite 25 year olds that have all been trained to go into politics, all been trained to go into high finance business, all been trained to go into corporate echelons that. The rest of us will never have the cat in hell's chance of going to. So therefore, I think that the future will just be that the elite will look after themselves and the rest of us will just degradate to a stage where we're no longer relevant. And that is the dystopian future that I can see. Unless you have a charismatic leader that takes over and shows the future as a benefit for everybody, you know? And this, we're at a tipping point now for the simple reason we have the climate change thing that we have to do. Mm -hmm. The selfish people are not going to address that. They're going to say, ah, 
you know, I'll make another million and then hope that my kids can go and live on Mars, you know? And so as long as you, this, this home office and this, this jolt that we've got with COVID now, I think has, has made people think, what is the future look like? And there is no leader at the moment that can mm -hmm. paint that picture that people mm -hmm. will follow. And th there are people who've tried it, but the media and the right wing press have just destroyed them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's very hard to paint the picture where you're looking after everybody. And there are still different tiers of, of rich and poor, but the poor are not dying. You know, I feel I feel um, talking about leadership that it in the future and it's already happening. Uh, it has um, been all the time, but now with the pandemic, I think it has come out much more that inner leadership uh, and your own inner leadership is going to take over much more in the future. So uh, opposed to looking uh, to some big kind of savior who's going to save us all, supposedly. Uh, it's it's going to be down to your own self, taking care of uh, and getting some balance in shape, uh, whether it being a community, your your home uh, home balance, your work balance. Uh, every kind of thing needs to be, uh, yeah, sort of in balance to, to work out. And, uh, and this is not down to somebody else dictating it on to you it's uh it's down to your own self to create that for your own self i understand what you're saying the only thing is that makes you selfish because therefore you not not you personally uh, not not that person personally what i'm saying is that there needs to be somebody with a vision of the future that can that can rally people around to mm. start thinking like what you're just saying at the moment, not many people will automatically do that because they're too busy trying to put food on the table, heat the house. Yes. Now, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Tricia Slater just said that it's depressing. I hope it's depressing because we need to act now. And it's from our age, it's too late. I mean, we can. the only thing that we can do is to bring our kids up to, to, to create the world that, <laughs> that they want. You know, mm -hmm. and it's not our world anymore. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. thing is that... That there is an opportunity here that we can see who the important people were, who the important people were not. And we, if we can find a way to rally round something, and I'm, and I'm sorry, Juliani, but it has to be a leader. I don't think that anybody's going to self-lead. If everybody's self-leading, then there is no order, you know. And I agree that you have to self-lead your own life, um, you know. Um, but once you're in a community there has to be a community leader. That's the problem with communism. Of course. Of, there will be always some uh, kind of leader, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, and your own uh, inner leadership is, uh, is the one uh, who's uh, taking care of, of your own self. Because... Um, that's uh, that, that's in the end the the most important, and uh, and I uh, I feel that uh, uh, when you say that you don't uh, have a place here anymore, uh, or or that the, this world doesn't belong to to it you anymore, to it, no. it sure it sure does. Look at uh, look at you. We wouldn't be sitting here uh, having this kind of discussion if it uh, if you were not part of it. If yeah, you but were don't not, forget. Uh, I mean, this is a. If you hadn't I have a it. privilege. I have the privilege of of doing what I do for the simple reason is that I'm being looked after by a socialist um, system, right? So I've worked and I've earned enough social grace. Uh, in the company and everything to be able to live here in Tenerife and Christina gets a, a pension and I get an attendance allowance and that's enough for us to live. So we're very lucky in that respect that we have that. But a, lo a lot of people in the world don't. And a lot of people have to work and they don't get security. It's not security in their job. It's not security in their lives. So at the moment, I feel I'm secure, but I see a, a lot of people, the only security you get is if your parents are rich 
No, I, I, I disagree with that. I disagree with that. Yeah. No, yeah. Your, your parents don't have to. Yes, your parents have to maybe be rich and hand it down. But no, my parents were me rich, and I'm comfortable. I live comfortable. Yeah, but how old yeah. are you? And you everything saying, I have, I've, I've, yeah, but I've, our generation, I've, earned, I've earned myself. Yeah, but ge our generation, that's what I'm saying here. Yeah. Our generation have had it lucky because we were able to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. We were able to go out and get a job. We were able to buy a house with the one person earning in the family. You can't do that these days. If you, you tell a kid today of 25 years old who still lived with his mum, just get a good job and, and get a mortgage, you know, they'll laugh you in the face. The world has changed so much that the, it, is, it is totally foreign to me now. So we have to find a way for these people to, to be able to, to, to have a meaningful life. And the only way of doing that is to paint a picture of the future that you want and go for it. Unfortunately, the picture of the future that's being painted is metaverse. You know, what we'll do, we'll all plug in and have a happy life and live on, you know, vitamins and what have you and just pretend who we are. So you really need to decide what you want. The world needs to be fixed. And I know it's depressing, but maybe it's a wake-up call for the 80 eight people that are watching you know yeah well if everybody tells 10 people to go and paint the future yeah yeah what does christina think of us ask christina the question please what do you think Chris? <laughs> if she doesn't click she's not interested <laughs> no it's basically nothing to do with me <laughs> Because I can't do stuff too. Well, well, put it this way. We're, we're talking about working from home and it's ended up being the, the, the future of work, right? What does the future of work mean? So in your life, you've had a few jobs. Yeah? You've done housework. You've, uh, you've yeah. How do you see the future? Very black. <laughs> there, right, is there, I mean, is there, is there no thinking <coughs> with uh, uh, that group of people? Um, do they not? Do they not get things too easily? Do they not get things put in front of them now? So they've, they've no motivation to themselves because they get handed things. I mean, if they didn't, if they didn't, did they get all the wee bits and pieces? They would have to go out and get themselves a job. Yeah, but what what are what are they handed? What are they handed? Yeah. Live in the UK. I'll not say name of That's I'm going. That's my take on it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've, 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 I've haven't, I haven't studied this, but I've looked into this. You know, the 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 way that the the social safety net works in Britain is is a shame, really, because any social safety net that you have is either taken advantage of, one thing, or mm -hmm. it's seen as a gift from everybody. And there's this jealousy in Britain at the moment, where somebody doing better or worse, uh, better than you, is is a problem for you. You know. And uh, I, I told the story about the guy who offered to pay me three grand a week. He was a rich yacht owner and I was a magician. He says, oh, I'll, I'm looking after you. I'm going to pay you this. And this guy freaked out and said, oh, he's trying to scam you. He's got a new car over there. He was so jealous, you know, that this other guy, I mean, it never came. He never gave me the money because I didn't go to meet him. But, you know, I don't think people are handed. I've, I mean, my family and my brother's family, They've all worked and they've got jobs and they're buying houses and stuff. But also they've been helped by the parents because it's impossible now to get a job and buy a house, which was the way to get to get on the ladder in Britain. Obviously, in Germany, buying a house isn't a, isn't a, isn't a thing. You know, you, you build a house in Germany or you rent. There's no stigma attached. And but I think that this this fallacy that the reason that the state doesn't work is because people are just ripping it off, you know, I mean, True. try and try and live on on that on that money that people get. And of course, a lot of people um, 
if they if they don't have a good education um, because they were stuck in a in a school that didn't get any funding, you know, and it, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. But the working is it has to change. We're going to need less and less unskilled workers. You need a college degree now to flip burgers in McDonald's. Yeah, especially go up and press the button. Speak into the coming. Speak, in, speak into the screen, and that's it. Yes, Julia. Coming to uh, to one word that we uh, have been discussing uh, a lot. Um, yeah, over the the last uh, months, I think it's it's quite uh, valid as well for for this topic. Attitude is uh, is one key word. Uh, keeping uh, keeping the attitude right in uh, in yeah no matter what uh, what challenge uh, there is uh, there is right now or coming in the future um, attitude can really really make uh, a difference in in any kind of situation mm -hmm. and I, I cannot uh, repeat it often uh, often enough uh, it helps in 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 any situation that some someone might uh, see quite dark um attitude a good attitude and a positive attitude can uh, can shift a lot of uh, situations even bad ones around and flip yeah you've, you've, you've said you've said it in a nutshell there is going to be a lot of changes uh, in the world the way we do things yeah. um it's a challenge and if you've got the right attitude, uh, you will be able to ride these challenges. If you haven't, you won't. You'll fall. As I said before, it's, I think what we need is a vision of the future to work towards. And then everybody gets a job to work towards that future. I think climate change is a, is a way that we can come together. So the sustainable um, projects that are happening on Tenerife is a way for mm. people to come together to work towards a goal. But this goal needs to be global. And this goal is not global. Most people are worried that we say, well, I will sell my carbon footprint to a, another country because they're not producing as much carbon. I'll just carry on, you know, doing the carbon. I'm not a big sort of like um, tree hugger or anything like that. But I think that we need to we need to know that this world is like one little place, moat of dust hanging in a in a, a sunbeam, uh, to, to paraphrase Carl Sagan. And what we need to be able to do is to decide on what the future is. And the future is not uh, oligarchs taking over the whole world and for the rest of us just to be busy work. Mm -hmm. You know, busy work. That's what I was trying to say with the home office type thing. A lot mm -hmm. of the work you're doing is busy work. Nothing, it doesn't actually benefit mankind. And, yeah. and, that's okay. That's okay because you're doing it to be busy to get money to go and consume consumer yeah. goods, right? And if that's the goal, that's fine. It's working perfectly. And, but you know, that can't be it. The human race should be able to say our vision of the next generation of the future, if you like, is the Star Trek utopia where we think about things, where we educate ourselves, where we... we we don't have to worry where the next meal's coming from. We don't have to worry about the roof over our heads. We don't have to... We're all wearing the same stuff because fashion doesn't really, you know, have, a, have an interest anymore. I mean, makeup and stuff like that is... Uh, you know, if you eat properly, you don't need makeup. And, you know, what is makeup anyway? It's, 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 it's didn't, an old I didn't put mine on tonight. I didn't, oh! exactly, exactly. I didn't have time to put mine on. Exactly. Sorry about that. Anyway, That's, anyway, so uh, this, this, these are the types of discussions I like. I would like more people to come on. Uh, yes. I just want to go. I've, I've been looking at some of the, the comments here, and I will read them all. Uh, May's point says, leader who can lead means that he should have some substance uh, that is leading worthy and need to come from a grassroots people, need to be able to create a platform where ideas gather and picked by a leader. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there are a few things you can look at which are international. Uh, DM25, for instance, D-I-E-M-25, Democracy in Europe. And uh, that's a good, a good thing. There's the Peace and Justice Project, um, which fortunately or unfortunately, depending on which side of the thing you're on, is, is called the Jeremy Corbyn Project. But basically, it's Peace and Justice. So read that. Just take the... the um, 
the Jeremy Corbyn bit out and read the policies there and get involved. Those are two things you can do in Britain. I know Britain's not in the European Union, but we're still in Europe. So DM, D-I-E-M, 25, and Peace and Justice Project. If you're in the States, um, anything Bernie Sanders is, uh, is involved with. Um, and also get involved at the local level. Sustainable. If you're on Tenerife, you got Canary Green. We got, what else? What else we got here? Canary Green. Canary Green's one. There must be others. But uh, you know, it's. Uh, I think it's in our hands and our children's hands. So as long as we brought up our children not to be selfish, and we brought up our children to have a social conscience, and we brought up our children to know that charity is a failure of government to act, which it definitely is. Then um, I think the future might be bright. Let's all get together and solve the big problem. We don't want oligarchs, we don't want warmongers, and we need to save the planet from the utter destruction of climate change. And if we can do that, we'll have done a great job. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna go around and ask for final thoughts now. Christina, have I talked enough? Yeah, <laughs> I guess you have, yeah. Maybe quite clear. And what's your view on it? I've got the same view. <laughs> I'm the leader, right? I'm the leader. Make me pizza, she says. Shut up and make the pizza. <laughs> Juliani. Well, it, it was a, a, a refreshing discussion we had there. Yes, and uh, it would have been nice to have some more uh, people joining us on that one. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, really did enjoy that topic. Thanks, Ian, for uh, for putting that out and uh, uh, and for our viewer for suggesting it. And I hope we, we discussed it uh, to, to your satisfaction. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, keeping it uh, yeah positive, uh, as I said, uh, keep the attitude uh, right. Uh, there are bumpy times uh, sometimes, and uh, and uh, those uh, yeah stumbling stones can uh, become stepping stones. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Ian, my yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well have, I, uh, have I converted you yet? No, you're not convert me. <laughs> I am what I am. <laughs> um, yes, uh, I think we covered the the, the home working thing. Um, I've had a lot of uh, tips from other people as well. A lot of other people been talking to me about bits and, bits and pieces of things. The thing it struck me on some of the people that was asking questions was stress. I was. I stood back at that actually when they said stress. Um, so I'm going to finish up with a tip for managing stress working at home. It's a simple one, very simple. Create a routine. Whether you set your own schedule or you have specific hours for doing things, as I said before, make a to do, a to -do list. Make life easy for yourself. That's all I will say on the subject. Uh, what I will say is um, we will be looking at the comments in the chat. And once it goes up, uh, anybody wants to make any other comments on that, please feel free. Uh, we look at them all and you never know what, what else may come up. Yeah. There is one or two things that was maybe mentioned tonight will actually be... Uh, looked at in some future uh, shows that we have some topics in that uh, stress is one of them um, uh, in, the, in the future yeah, well, Trisha, Trisha said um, be kind and I think that is a, that is a, nice, uh, a nice thing mm -hmm. to, to finish on random acts of kindness and yeah. if you can't be kind be careful so I think, Ian, that was a great, great subject. I'm sorry I hijacked it for a political um, tirade there. But I'm, I'm really worried about my daughter and, you know, what world that we're leaving for her. 
And she says, you're not leaving your world for us, Dad. We're creating our world. And so I say, right, you know, I'm 61. It's time for you to take the reins. And as long as we get old, warmonging oligarchs in charge and old people uh, running the media, then we won't, won't get on. So uh, change the future and let us know. It's just a shame we've got to die, really, because then I'd like to know how it all turns out. <laughs> Wouldn't be all. <laughs> I know, I know. It's like my dad said, I just want to know what comes next. That's I have thought about that, actually. Yeah. I just want to know what comes next. I don't want to go just yet. I want to know what comes next. Okay, we're coming up for the hour. In fact, we just passed the hour. Thank you, each and every one of you, for joining us today. I'm going to try something different tonight. I'm going to do this and then try this. Does that work? No, it doesn't. That works, though. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yep. So, yes. Google thinks you might like to see this one next. And if you want to support the channel, click on our wedding photograph down there. And uh, if you're not subscribed, you can subscribe for free right here. And we'll see you on the next one. Solo Mio. Thank you, everybody. Vamos a la playa.